Hey guys, today I'm going to introduce to you and uh, briefly describe two books. Uh, actually, I'm just going to go over this one. I do want to briefly introduce you to this one. This is Ecological Microcosms by Robert Byers and H.T. Odom. H.T. Odom and Byers are prominent ecologists, or were, still are, uh, responsible for many advances in the field. H.T. Uh, Odom, for example, is the uh, creator, not creator, but the developer more so, of the maximum power principle, which I made a video of. Um, in a few days ago, maybe last week. This is for ecologists and uh, scientists who use micro microcosms as a way to uh, study ecosystems and their various effects. It's very scientific. Um, I th I'm going to have to make a separate video on this. This video is going to be about ecological uh, microcosms, uh, specifically uh, this book on them. She doesn't say microcosms, but aquariums are microcosms. They are ecosystems. Even ones that aren't supposed to be designed as one are ecosystems they just don't model an ecosystem as fully as an aquarium that was designed by someone to specifically model an ecosystem but um, th to some degree they're all ecosystems they all can be considered micro microcosms to some degree so this video is going to be in two parts um, two parts within one video not two separate videos part one I'm going to introduce you to the book and Diana Wallstead and I'm going to briefly go over the table of contents. That should be about less than three minutes. So if that's all you want, that's all you have to watch. Part two, I'm going to give you chapter previews and uh, talk a little bit about what makes the book a great book, in my opinion, as we do so. So this is the cover. Uh, this is the back. That's Diana Wallstead herself. She is an ecologist and a hobbyist of aquariums. She is founder or creator of the Wallstead Method. And um, this book is not about the Wallstead method. It's about ecology and planted aquariums. So if you're like, well, I don't want to do a Wallstead tank, uh, so I'm not gonna, I don't need this book, um, because it's not about the Wallstead method. Although uh, she does describe the Wallstead method in this book and aspects of what make the Wallstead method, the Wallstead method, such as a substrate being soil, she does describe using potting soil and potting mix as a substrate, which is part of the Wallstead method. But this is not a book about the Wallstead method. It's about ecology and planted aquariums. So, don't worry about that. So in this book it says, you will learn how plants purify the water and the substrate to make the aquarium healthier and easier to maintain. This is so brief, it doesn't give it justice to the book, so I'm just gonna skip that. So, most people say that you need CO2 systems to have heavily planted tanks or high light. That is not true. These are all very densely planted tanks. This is the Wallstead method. There's no CO2 system and the substrate has enough bacteria in it processing things, decomposing, you know, having what's called soil respiration. They're producing plenty of CO2 for the uh, plants. And you can have basically as dense of a uh, plant as you want, as a tank as you want. And uh, you don't need a CO2 system. Okay, starting with the table of contents now. I'll go over this. You can pause it to uh, get a closer look. You have the introduction, where she talks about uh, the chapters briefly and what they're going to be about. Then you have chapter two, plants as water purifiers. Talks about what plants are able to do. Now plants, people say plants are water purifiers. You have to know what that means. You can't just say that and expect them to you know, act as a filter, then it's not exactly like that. You have to know what they're able to do, what they can't do, in order to have it work, that aspect of the plants work for you. Allelopathy, I think I pronounced that incorrectly, but that's okay. It's um, plant chemicals interacting with other plants and other things. Communication, basically, through uh, that plant's use. Sometimes resu resulting in chemical warfare between aqu aquatic plants. Gotta be careful of uh, that. I've never had a problem. I've never had to check that to make sure plants are compatible. You have a section on uh, bacteria. goes through processes of bacteria. You have your basic aerobic processes and then your anaerobic processes, such as hydrogen sulfide production, fermentation, and methanogenesis. Uh, these are things that, uh, say, this happens when you're using... The, they are out of electron receptors. They don't have oxygen. They don't have nitrate to use and they use their last resort, which gives them the least amount of energy, which is why it's their last resort. Using CO2 as the electron receptor to breathe, produces methane and uh, alcohol, acetic acid, and very nasty stuff. Sources of plant nutrients, 
chapter 5. So a little shaky here. You have carbon. Talks about um, carbon, the carbon cycle, CO2. is how plants get most of their mass. It's not from the soil. Plants get most of their biomass from the carbon from CO2. Uh, they don't, and they get their nutrients from the soil, but what makes plant matter plant matter, they get from breathing. Plant nutrition and ecology. Talks about required nutrients, what they do, things like that. Pause there, give you a chance to pause. Substrate, big section on substrate. Very important stuff. I think in my microcosm, it is the more, most important aspect of the microcosm, is healthy soil substrate. Uh, specifically, I designed mine to be aquatic. Uh, let's see, aerial advantage. I'm not sure what this, it's been a while since I've went through this, but there you go. Talks about algae control. And then uh, practical aquarium setup and maintenance. So this does speak about aquarium setup pertaining to the Wallstead method because that is her method. But again, this book, as you can see, is not particularly about the Wallstead method. So the introduction of the book, is in one sentence, I'm just going to read. Ecology of the Planted Aquarium should appeal to the hobbyist who wish to set up a successful planted aquarium, plus understand more about its ecology. And that's it. There you go. I'm actually going to make part two a separate video because six minutes is kind of longer than I thought it was going to take. Definitely didn't hit that three minute goal. That's all right, though. But uh, if you want a preview of the chapters and what makes this book a great book, in my opinion, and I, I will, I will do, explain that to you right now, actually. So it's an excellent reference. You don't have to read it in any kind of order. You can pick it up and pick a chapter and read it. It's very concise, brief sections that are easy to read and get the information that you need fast. You don't have to read, say, a chapter in order to understand a concept. You can read a few paragraphs and understand a concept. Uh, Diana's method of writing can explain complicated science in a way that anyone can understand. She has a very good way of explaining things in a concise, brief manner, basically that you don't need any kind of scientific or ecological education to understand. Uh, she keeps that in mind. That's she... In, in how she is writing. Uh, she uses diagrams, charts, and illustrations. So you got some charts, you have some uh, tables. This, for example, is biocarbonate use in species. Bicarbonate is actually interesting because plants use that and CO2 and they use oxygen. Most people didn't know. Plant species there. Let's see. We'll keep that. The fact, effects of bacterial processes on aquatic ecosystems. So you have various bacterial processes. So uh, another thing that makes this book really great is because she is an ecologist, this book is fully referenced. So you can be confident that you're getting correct information. This is chapter four, and this entire page and this entire page is references just for chapter four and of course you can use these to hop around and to develop your knowledge even farther so there you go that's some aspects that make this book so great hope you liked the little brief introduction there uh, in part two I'm going to uh, show you the first pages of um, each chapter if you're interested and then uh, decide if you uh, like it I would buy it if you're interested in ecology and planted aquariums this is a must read it's really the only thing you need uh, if you were on a desert island and had to build a planted aquarium, this is the book I'd have.